I looked around, I saw the Israeli flag, I saw the Brazil flag, I saw the American flag, and I said, where is the New Zealand flag? So I brought my own flag. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> We've got our close cousins, which is right at the back there, that is Australia. And if you count the stars there, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, right there on the back panel. And we have four. So six and four is ten, the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> So praise God, it's lovely to be here today and thank you so much Pastor and for Dr. Joseph Webb for initiating this. It's always a pleasure to be able to minister the word. I like to minister and just speak into people's hearts and uh, is this a bit too close? Should I drop it down a bit? Is it puffing? You alright? Just carry on? It's puffing. puffing. Alrighty, I'll try not puff. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, you're great. You're worthy to be praised. And we exalt your holy name. We pray you'd minister to us as we minister the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Did I bring that thing there, love? Did I bring it? Would you like to bring it up? I want to show my wife off, so I'll bring her up to the pulpit. Thank you, sweetheart. That's my darling wife, Marion. Thank you very much. (coughs) I want to give you a universal law. Where there is a breakdown in personal responsibilities, there will be an equal and corresponding breakdown in personal relationships. When there's a breakdown in personal responsibilities, there'll be a corresponding breakdown in personal relationships. I think of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God gave Adam a responsibility. He did not carry out that responsibility. What's the first thing he did? Went and hid himself. Breakdown in personal responsibility, breakdown in personal relationship. It's quite interesting what uh, we what we hear uh, and read from Genesis chapter 3 verses 9 and 10. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, Adam, where art thou, Adam? Now here's the God of the universe that made every twig and every leaf and he just doesn't know where Adam is. Adam, where art thou, Adam? You see, Adam had fouled up. He had broken his personal relationship, at least his personal responsibility, thus had a breakdown in personal relationship. God knew where Adam was. He wanted Adam to know where Adam was. And this is what Adam says. I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I went and hid myself. Ever since the Garden of Eden, man is hiding. He's hiding his nakedness. Men, especially the male species, Fear nakedness. I do a lot of counseling. Counsel people. Wives come. Where's your husband? Oh no. He said he doesn't need any counseling. You're the one who needs the counseling. See, men fear nakedness. They don't like transparency. And most of us in the broader sense are a little fear of transparency. And so I want to talk a little bit about that this morning. And I, I think of Second Kings and, and uh, verse 17 and verse 9, rather an absurd verse because it says this, And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right in the sight of the Lord. Imagine doing something secretly, I mean behind God's back. He just did not know that I did this. And so there is this this attitude of, of, of hiding our sins and trying to just do things on the quiet where no one will know, etc. And a verse that I so often quoted from the book of Chronicles, it comes from Second Chronicles 16 and verse 9, and it says this, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show his arms strong the behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. And I'm persuaded that even here this morning, 
The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout this congregation here. He's looking for the man. He's looking for the woman. He's looking for the young man, the young lady, whose heart is perfect toward him, whose heart is absolutely transparent, open, and say, Lord, all of me. I want to be totally transparent before the Lord. And men fear transparency. I really do. They don't like to get down to the nitty gritties of just, just where it's at. It, 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 it's a threat to them. My wife and I were reading the scriptures some time ago and uh, we came to First Peter chapter 4 verse 17 and 18 and this is what it says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of those that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous, scarcely, just I mean by the skin of their teeth, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where on earth shall the ungodly and sinner appear? When I read that, I thought, Lord, that's a high calling. That's a committed life. That's a life of absolute transparency and dedication. And I think the scriptures are clear when it says, if you judge yourself, you will not be judged with the world. If we have a good introspection and say, Lord, is my heart open? As your eyes run to and fro throughout the whole of the earth, through this congregation this morning, he's looking for the man, he's looking for the woman whose heart is a heart of integrity, a heart of uprightness, a heart of absolute dedication and transparency. I remember hearing a preacher use a verse once and as he said something, it just resonated with my spirit and it stuck in my heart and I thought, Lord, that's a powerful thought. And he said, Philippines 1 and verses 9 and 10, and he quoted from that, and, and I'd like if I can find my reference here. <clears throat> this is what he said. He read this from Paul writing to the church of Philippi. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and all judgment or discernment. And then this verse just jumped out at me that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. I wonder whether that is your heart this morning, as the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. And you say, my heart's desire is that I may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. And we cannot do it in our own strength. We know that. Without me, you can do nothing. But in the main, I think I'm speaking to believers this morning, Christians, and he wants us to raise the bar. Say, Lord, that I may approve the things that are excellent that I may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ. That's a high calling. And that's my desire. And I hope I'm speaking to those who can say, yes, Lord, that's truly my desire. I want to be that way before God. I like looking at different variations of the scriptures and different translations. And, and I, I looked at one of the translations of the New Testament in the language of the people, and this is what it said, so that ye may always approve better things and be men of transparent character and a blameless life. I thought, wow, transparent character. Men fear transparency. 
so we're already at a disadvantage, that we may be of a transparent character and a blameless life. Moffat puts it there, he says, sincere and transparent. And I thought of that and I thought, Lord, how can I equate that? I like looking at the Greek and looking at different Hebrew words and meanings as they develop and see the, the, the root of the word, etc. And as I studied this, I looked at that word sincere. I thought, now that's an interesting word. I know lots of people have watered it down and watered down the message of Christ. But as I looked at that word, I said, that's interesting. This word, they say, the Greek word here for sincere is elikrinaya. Elikrinaya. I thought, now that's a posh word. It'll sound good if I speak to you people. So this, uh, see, the Greek word is elikrinaya, you know. And he thought, whoa, he's quite a learned guy. This. No, but I, I found it out. I looked at one of these strongs and I said, and then I, I checked out. I said, now that's good. And the Greek scholars tell us that this word was derived from two Greek words, elikrinaya. The, the first is the sunlight. The other is to judge. So they put the two words together and say the word sincere really means to judge by the sunlight. I thought, now that's interesting, to judge by the sunlight. And I thought of, as I've been to Israel and... Uh, you go to the little bazaars and you can smell all the spices and you walk down these dingy little streets and you hear them say, Come, I want to give you some of my hospitality. Come here, I want you to buy something beautiful for your wife. Come, 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 my brother, come, come. And they bring you in there and the next thing you, you buy some little thing and you look at a little vase. We call it a vase. You, you've got a, another word for it, a vase. But this vase, <coughs> this vase... And so I buy it, I said, yeah, and I barter it, and I get it. I said, that's great. He said, no, this is special Phoenician grass. It's very special. I said, oh, that's good. Okay, thank you. And I pay the money, and I go home, and I put it on the mantelpiece. Sure. It doesn't seem to have a ring about it. So the first thing I do, <clears throat> I go out to the sunlight, and I hold it up, and I judge it by the sunlight, Elikrinea. And I say, man, the scoundrel, he's so, this thing has got a lot of little fractures and little cracks in this thing. Man, this guy's rooked me. So I go back to the fellow, I said, hey, you know what? This thing, you've, you've sold me, no, 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 it's special, it's meant to be like that, it's antique, you know? And he trusts, I said, no, no to judge by the sunlight. And I believe that's how the Lord takes our lives. That He wants us to be sincere and without offense. To judge by the sunlight. Now right now, as the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to your heart, I wonder if He used to take us out to the sunlight, to that brilliance of His searching light. Hold our lives up. Will He see our lives as Elikrinia, sincere and without offense. Covered by the blood, yes. But are there present areas in your life, little things that you've been doing, little areas of dishonesty, little things that perhaps are, are there, you, you haven't been too particular about it. And Well, if the Lord was to come tonight, I, I think I'd like to rush home and just get a little bit of dry cleaning done and get myself sorted out a little bit more. You know? I don't think I'm quite... Hey, the eyes of the Lord... Run to and fro. He's looking for the man. He's looking for the woman whose heart is pure, sincere, transparent, elikrinaya, sincere, judged by the sunlight. And as God sees my life, he sees me as open and utterly honest and sincere before God. I have counseled so many people. I've witnessed to so many people and I've seen people, I've talked to them. And sadly, I hear testimonies. My husband, he, he is the treasure of the church. 
But I was going through his pockets the other day and I found a note that there was a, a telephone number of a girl and I asked him who, oh no, she broke down on the side of the road. So I, I gave, <coughs> I wanted to give her a lift and what have you. So I just wanted to check she got home and what have you. So she said, okay. So she takes that and finds a the number. There's some little girlfriend he's got on the quiet. Oh, he's the treasurer of the church. Pentecostal church, praising God, Psalm 1, hymn 2, hallelujah, praise God, he's there, <laughs> hallelujah, oh, glory. A little bit of tongues will make it good, you know, shandarabani, that sounds good. And, <clears throat> but you know, hey, if God has to hold your life up to the sunlight, are you alekrina? Are you sincere and without offense? He's looking for the man and the woman whose heart is open and transparent. No, we don't do it in our own strength. We cannot. Without me, as I've said, you can do nothing. I want to shift now, and I want to go down to the Mediterranean world. Big flea markets, big trestle tables, and all the Phoenician glass in the old times. <clears throat> and the man comes along, and he does much the same. He barters and he finds a, va a vase. And he takes it home and he says, this is great and what have you, and he puts it up. This doesn't, doesn't sound too good, so once again, to judge by the sunlight, sincere. And he looks and he sees the same thing, fractures. So he says, man, it's got a beautiful design on it, but what they've done, they've taken beeswax. They didn't have all the epoxy resins and the glues we have today. And they've taken the beeswax, melted it down, put all the little broken pieces together, smoothed it out, and then painted a beautiful design on it. And the average purchaser would not know. But this man took it out. And he judged it by the sunlight. Sincere. He went back to the fellow and said, Hey, this thing has got cracks on it. And the, all the traders were getting a bad name. So eventually, in this Mediterranean world, and the Latin language was spoken to, and so what happened? Then most of the people started putting up signs on their desks, and the sign read, Sinceris, Sinceris. Everywhere you looked, Sinceris, Sinceris. And when we looked at the word, we found out, oh, the Latin, Sine, S-I-N-E, is without the word Cirrus or Sira is wax, and it meant sincere is without wax. Our vases have not been waxed up and smoothed over in a nice little design like a lot of us do, paint a pretty little picture on there, praise the Lord, etc. No, 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 no. These are without wax. No wax, no pretty design, no cracks. Sinceris. And it's from that that we get our English word, sincere. It simply means without wax. I wonder if God holds our lives up today. And all we know, I've been forgiven. Yeah, praise God. That's step number one. Are we walking in the light? Are you walking in implicit obedience to the Lord? Oh, yes, we fall. But do you bounce back and get back into the light and say, Lord, be merciful to me. I know that's not right. That was a little bit dishonest. I told a little bit of a white lie. I think all lies are black. They're not white. But I, 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 just, uh, hey, get right with God. Be transparent without wax, without wax. My wife and I were preaching a number of years ago. I was preaching in a church in uh, just south of, uh, of Chicago. And I'd waited all day on the Lord for a message. And the Lord gave me a message. And I felt I needed to speak about obedience. And so I preached on obedience that night. And it was a little Pentecostal church. And uh, I gave an altar call. And people started coming down. And people started confessing sin. And the Spirit of God was working. But during the, the praise and worship service, there was a young man with blonde hair, Blue eyes, lovely, good, handsome young fella. He was walking up with a microphone, you know. He was <clears throat> pray, praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's sing that one again. Hallelujah. Now, every one of you, let's bless God. And he was running up and down and blessing God and praising God. And he was really full of the joy of the Lord.
I thought, boy, this bloke loves the Lord. He really does. This bloke. Someone said, what's a bloke? I said, it's a bloke. You know, like a, like a fella, a chap. This, a chap. A chap? No, a bloke. Well, anyway, and this, this fellow, this bloke, he, he, he really loved the Lord. But when I gave the altar call, the first man, bloke, who was out was this praise and worship leader. He came and knelt down right at the altar. And he began to shake. And his shoulders were shaking. And he was really under conviction. He began to weep. He was weeping. And I thought, Lord, the Spirit of God has touched this man. Ministers came and I said, is there something you want me to pray for, brother? He couldn't speak. He could not speak. The minister asked him to. He couldn't. Others came down, gave testimonies, how the Lord had spoken to them, etc. Even the minister, I'd said, you know, maybe you've stolen $20. You've never given it back. That may have happened 25 years ago, but you know, now God wants you to make right. Go and give that money back. The pastor got up. He says, you know what, brother? You put the, hit the nail on the head. When I was in Bible college, I borrowed $20 from a bloke, and I ne a, a chap, a, a, a fella, and I, and, and I never gave it back. He said, you know, the spirit is convicted. I said, well, good for you, brother. You go and do it. So the minister didn't close the service, but he... He said, like, we're just going to wait. This man went back, praise and worship leader, sat in the, in, in, the, in the pews. My wife and I sat behind him. I was praying, Lord, just touch this man. Let it come free, whatever it is, Lord. He's not helicrinia. He's not transparent. There's something in his life, the Spirit of God is convicting him. And then after what seemed like an eternity, he stood up. And he, he stood there, and he looked around. And he said, Pastor, please. <laughs> Please, Lord, <coughs> please forgive me. Please forgive me. I thought, wow, the Lord's touched his heart. He said, you are looking at a phony. He said, I walk up and down here praising God, but he said, my life is not right before God. I've accepted Jesus, yes, I know the Lord, but I've allowed things in my life. I beat my wife. I curse her out at home, I slap her, I'm unkind to the children, I'm like a monster in the home. When I come to church, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I'm so religious. And he said, I want you to forgive me. Pastor, forgive me. God, forgive me. Darling, my wife, will you please forgive me? And the Spirit of God came upon that little meeting that day. And people's hearts were broken. People's hearts were, were repenting. I thought, oh, hallelujah. Judged by the sunlight. As he came under the sunlight of God's Spirit, and the Spirit of God shone right into his heart that day just through a simple message that I, as a South African at that time, preached. The Spirit of God just touched him and moved in his heart. I never met him again. I don't know what happened. I hope he's continued to keep on keeping on being sincere and without offense. And there may be someone here tonight or today, you know, there may be some unforgiveness in your heart, maybe something that has been binding you. I tell people so often, I said, listen, the Bible is very clear. If you will not forgive when you pray and you will not forgive, then God says, I will not forgive you, period. But if you forgive from your heart, not just from your head, you forgive from your heart. And this is what I found out as I've counseled so many people, that the same cord that you bind someone else with in unforgiveness or bitterness or resentment will be the cord that will bind you and put you in prison. And Matthew chapter 18 is clear. The man who would not forgive was taken and thrown into jail. And it did more than that. It says he was handed over to the hands of the tormentors. And they tormented him day and night. That's what will happen to you if you don't forgive from your heart. The Spirit of God may be just revealing and unearthing something in your heart. God, I know I need to forgive a dead father. He abused me. And I've held that bitterness in my heart all these years. I don't know who you are. I may never meet any of you again. But the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. 
He's looking for the man. He's looking for the woman whose heart is perfect toward him. His heart is utterly sincere. And if God had to take you now and hold you up to the sunlight as he does, would he see a heart that is perfectly honest, that is perfectly sincere, that is walking in the light, as it goes on to say, a blameless life. Now, they didn't say faultless. We're all full of fault. I mean, we've all fouled up. But you can be blameless. The Bible talks about that. In other words, God will not hold that against you because he knows you're walking in the light of God's revelation and truth for you at that time. And my light may be different from pastor's light. Pastor's light may be different from Dr. Joe Webb's light. Your light may be different from brother so-and-so's light. But God expects us all to be walking in the light. And as God begins to nudge your heart and said, what about that little thing? Psalmist David hid his sin. And he said, all night long, I tossed and turned, and my pillow was wet with my tears. And there was a roaring in my spirit. I had no rest day nor night. And Psalm 32 verse 5 says, And I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. And the Lord forgave the iniquity of my heart. I wonder whether that is where you are today. That the Lord wants to forgive and to cleanse. He wants you to really expose it. Say, God, this is what my situation is. No one knows, but God, I've been watching pornography on the internet. My wife doesn't know. No one knows. Least of all, my pastor doesn't know. But God says, I judge by the sunlight. I'm looking for the man and the woman whose heart is perfect toward him. And yeah, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I'm persuaded if we hide our sin, we'll never prosper. But if we confess, we'll find mercy. No, 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 no. We've only gone halfway. But if we confess and forsake, as Dr. Joseph Weird often says to me, brother, repentance is not just saying sorry for your sins. It's admit it and quit it. Now that's the hard part. Confess and forsake. God, be merciful to me. I know this is wrong. I'm going to confess this. My wife and I keep open accounts. I don't hold anything back from my wife. If I have a dream... In the middle of the night and some bird is trying to get off with me and trying to flirt around with me and whatever. I don't know who it is, what it is and why it happens. First thing I'll do in the morning, I'll say, sweetheart, I don't know who this bird was, but she's trying to undress and trying to get with me here and whatever. Sweetheart, I'm sorry, she said. Don't you worry, I'm the real thing. Come here. <laughs> <coughs> we keep open. Transparency leads to intimacy. Intimacy gives birth to trust. Trust brings about comfort and peace and security. We need to be transparent before each other, especially husbands and wives. Open book. Keep honest. Keep true. Keep walking in obedience to God. And open your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, I want you to touch my life. Transform my heart. And right now, if there's anything in your life, then you know that you know that God may just be touching and say, what about that? I spoke to a lady once and she said, you know, when I was in teacher's college, I passed my teacher's exam, but I cribbed I had all my little crib sheets and my crib notes and things like that, and I cheated. And now, ten years later, the Spirit of God has brought it back to me. And I feel so convicted because I'm now a teacher, I'm qualified, but I know it was dishonest. So, well, sister, if the Spirit has brought it back to you, the Bible says the Holy Ghost brings all things back to your remembrance. And he will not allow you to be tempted 
above that which you are able to endure. But he will, with that temptation, also give you a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. If the conviction has come, then my suggestion is you do something about it. And she did. I don't know what the final thing was. I think they said, well, it's been 10 years now. Thank you for being honest. Put out your hand. Naughty, naughty. You shouldn't have done that. And she felt free. She said, God, please forgive me. I know it was wrong. You see, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. He's looking for the man and the woman whose heart is elikrinia, transparent, sincere, without wax, without pretense, without cover-up, absolutely open and genuine before him. I'll close with a prayer that my daughter taught me. She stood up in the church one day when she was about 25 years of age. And she said, this is the prayer that I always pray. I want you to listen to it. Lord, if there's anything, anything in my life that displeases you, please, Lord, reveal it to me and help me to get it out of my life. Lord, if there's anything in my life that displeases you, please reveal it to me and help me to get it out of my life. I wonder whether you in faith this morning could pray that prayer. Lord, if there's anything in my life that you've touched me this morning and I know that, Lord, my, my life is not sincere without offense. I know there's areas in my life that I haven't put right just on the shady side, just a little dishonest, just things that are not right. God is speaking to you from his word and from the lips of this Kiwi, this New Zealander, who's come to bring you a message this morning, a message of love, a message to encourage you to press into Christ and leave no stone unturned. God loves you. And he says, if you confess, just like that man in that church, you confess your sin and you forsake it and say, God, give me the strength to get it out of my life. He will honor that prayer. and He will do a great work in your life. Let us pray. Lord, I just feel led of the Lord to ask everyone to stand, please, if you wouldn't mind. Just stand, and I'll only be one or two minutes and I'll be through. I want you not to judge your brother. If you will judge your own heart, you will not be judged. If you know and you are honestly, truly, not boastfully, but thankfully appreciative of the fact that you know that your life, <clears throat> your life is alikrinaya, is sincere. And as you stand here before God today, you know that you know that you're walking in the light. You're walking in obedience to God. And your heart is transparent and open before God. Not that you've arrived and everything, but you know where you are at this stage. Lord, my heart is like that and I thank you for it. I'm so grateful. I want you to sit down. The rest of you who can't do that from your heart and say, Lord, I know there may be areas in my life. That God, I know you're speaking to me right now. Remain standing. But those of you who know you can, please sit down right now. Please be proud. Don't, don't think it's boastful. Just say, thank you, Jesus. I have a clean, pure heart before God. And 95, 96% of the church is standing. And I thank you for your honesty. Now I want you to just in your heart to pray that prayer, Lord. You know what's in my heart. You know this area, Lord. Whatever it is, you know. I want you to pray and just lay that on the altar before God today and say, Lord, take it out of my life. I want to be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ. Will you do that? As we just close in prayer quiet, silent prayer before God. You pray that prayer. I'm going to hand it over now. Remain standing. I'm going to hand it now over to the pastor. Thank you so much.
remain standing in an attitude of prayer and let the pastor take from there. Father, how we thank you that you have been speaking to our hearts. We thank you, Lord, for your word and what it addresses in our hearts and lives that we're told, keep your hearts with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And Lord, I pray for each one here, each need that is represented, for each heart that is open to you. Father, it's time to do heart surgery. May you do that work that only you can do. If there's that need of confession, that need of forsaking, that need of making something right, may today, may now, right now be the time. And may we arise and come to you. There's one that needs to come forward or more that need to come forward to kneel at the altar to pray or to go into the prayer room and meet with someone. May that be the time. But may you do that work now. And we thank you, Lord, for speaking. May you give us that transparency, that sincerity that you desire from each one of us. Knowing that your eyes do run to and fro throughout the whole earth knowing that you're looking for those whose hearts are perfect towards you, that you might bless, that you might work, that you might use us. So bless and work now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.